And now, what's my line? Brought to you by Stop It Spray Deodorant. Poof, there goes perspiration. Poof Deodorant Body Powder, the body powder you spray. The Nest Shampoo, the new flowing cream shampoo. All in the first truly functional cosmetic containers, far easier to use. All created by Dr. Jules Montagnier, the famous cosmetic chemist. Time now to enjoy What's My Line? And now let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in the New York Journal American and papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. And on my left, the charming and brilliant and talented young humorist, Mr. Steve Allen. Thank you, Thank you very much. And on my left, uh, one of the lovely ladies of radio and television in a particularly classical mood tonight. She's just returned from Philadelphia where she did the road to Rome and she's proud of her new Grecian hairdo, Arlene <laughs> Francis. And on my left, a gentleman who is still beaming over his article on Marilyn Monroe and the current Esquire, Mr. Bennett Sir. Thank you, Charlie. <laughs> Finally, on my left, our distinguished news mo uh, moderator, panel moderator, who in this 96 degree temperature is hotter than ever tonight, Mr. John Charles Davis. <laughs> Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line, presented by Stop It. Once again, out of this black and steaming hot night, some good people have come to visit us and brought with them their occupations, which we trust the panel will find both interesting and somewhat difficult, so that our guests will carry home some prizes. We'll also have a famous guest challenger before the panel a bit later in the program, but now it's time to get underway. Time for the experts to meet our first challenger, whose job they've got to spot. Stop, spot. Will you sign in, please, ma'am? Nancy Jane. Such a pretty girl to have such a strong and bold handwriting. Where are you from, Miss Jane? Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Well, uh, I guess say that you know some of your neighbors over here by sight, but uh, they would like to know you a bit better, these Manhattanites. So would you take a small walk down in front of the panel? Would you take that glove off and shake hands with me? I sure would. I was wondering if, if she was wearing those for sheep or to hide something that would be a clue. No clue. All no right, Miss James, would you come over here and join me now, please? And on the basis of your handwriting and this brief chance you've had to meet the panel, we always give them at this point one free guess as to what your line may be, and we always begin the free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. I think she's a ballerina. A ballerina, Mr. Allen. I think she's a doll. Ah, yes. Miss Francis. I think she's a member of the armed services. <laughs> Mr. Sir. I think she's a winner of last year's Asbury Park baby parade. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm afraid nobody has it. We'll let our viewers at home have a further look at Miss James, and at the same time, we'll tell them what her line is. But the panel's got to dig. <laughs> All right, uh, Miss James, the rules of simplicity oh, itself. You. Every time you get a no answer from any one of the members of the panel, it costs the panel $5. We keep a record of it up here. Ten of these no's and you have won the game. And I hope this game goes to 20. Have uh, you stay here. <laughs> All right, Miss James is salaried. With that, let's begin the general questioning with Bennett Sir. We've got to have questions that will keep John Daly from having a conference with you. <laughs> is there a product involved in what you do? <clears throat> no. That's one down and no nine to go. <laughs> All right, Miss Gilgallon. Then you deal in services? Yes. Uh, are your services performed for the benefit of both sexes? Yes. Are these both sexes human? Yes. Uh, are they grown up? Mm, yes. You seem rather hesitant. Uh, could you at any time perform services for human beings who are not grown up? Yes. Do you do that? Yes. Uh, do you do anything instructive? Yes. Uh, do you instruct in any sport? Yes. Uh, is it uh, a sport that would be played at this time of year? Yes. Uh, <laughs> is it played at any other time of year? 
Yes. <laughs> uh, is this something that people do in groups? Yes. I think to be fair, that uh, we might say that it's possible they could do it uh, while not in groups, too, sometimes, couldn't they? Mm. Yes. Well, this is something that you could do on your own. You wouldn't have to be on a team of 11 or anything. That's what we were may trying to convey. Uh -huh. uh, do you have to do this sport in some particular type of place? Yes. Is some particular element necessary? Yes. Uh, would it be water? Yes. Do you have anything to do with swimming? Yes. Are you Don't a swimming we all? <laughs> Are you a swimming? <laughs> uh, well, could, could you perform your services for, uh, say, Steve and Bennett and make them terribly happy? And how I soon? Think. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a swimming teacher? Yes. Well, actually, there's a little bit more than that, so you go on, Miss Kilgallen. Um, would well, you teach diving, too? Yes. And do you teach life-saving? Yes. What more could she teach? Well, actually, uh, just keep on going. You haven't got the exact oh, oh, designation I see. yet. Don't tell me you're a lifeguard. Yes. yes. <laughs> what beach? Did you say what beach? What beach? I'm asking for the boys so they Well, actually, uh, we're a little bit afraid of what Mr. Allen might do if he oh, knew, so we're keeping it secret. Oh. <laughs> what beach is Palisades Park. Palisades oh. Park, please. How do you get there? <laughs> Men in this case have been known to go on their hands and knees. It's too hot to have only one down, so we'll make it two down anyway. Even though you didn't do too well with the prizes, we certainly hope you enjoyed your visit, because it was wonderful to have you with us on What's My Life. Good night. Well, panel, evidently the heat uh, suits you right down with tea. Let's see what you can do with the second challenger. Would you sign in, please, sir? Nick, which is short, I'm sure, for Nicholas. Nick Christopher, is that right, sir? That's right. <laughs> Would you be good enough to tell us, first of all, where you're from? Hamilton, Canada. Hamilton, Canada. Well, can, I must say, for all of you, welcome to the United States. Uh, we uh, got uh, some Americans over there, four of them. Actually, they can be nice on occasion. On other occasions, they're quite unpleasant, but they want to meet you. So would you walk down in front of the panel, please? Welcome to New York. Thank you very much. All right, Mr. Christopher, if you come over here and join me now. Uh, at this point, we always let the members of the panel have one free guess as to what the line may be. So uh, we will proceed as usual and ask for the first free guest from Miss Kilgallen. I think he's a bank president. A bank president. Mr. Allen. He's left-handed. I think he might be a pitcher. Miss Francis. I think he's an instructor, but I don't know what it is, and I wish I did. Ah, Mr. Sir. I think he plays on the Toronto Leaf hockey team. No, I'm afraid nobody has it. We'll let our viewers at home have a further look at Mr. Christopher. At the same time, we'll tell them what his line is. Christopher, the rules, I think you perhaps know. Every no answer from the panel costs them $5. We keep the record up here. Ten no's and you have won the game. And Mr. Christopher is self-employed. So let's begin the general questioning in this case with Steve Allen. Is there a product uh, in connection, connection with your work, Mr. Christopher? Yes. Is it the sort of a thing a fellow like uh, myself might come into contact with? Yes. <laughs> Is it something that I could hold in my hand? <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, if I were to do that, would I possibly find it, at least on a relative basis, soft to the touch? Yes. <laughs> is this thing ever uh, packaged in any way? I mean, is it ever put in cans or boxes or bottles or yes. bags or anything? Yeah, some sort of a commercial product. Is it uh, edible? Yes. <laughs> From this reaction, I would gather that this is not something which would be served as a main course. Is that correct? <laughs> no. Uh, I'd have a small cup. 
I mean, could you get it at Toot Shores or something of that? All right, Mr. Christopher wants to be more generous than I want to be. You'll still get uh, a yes, it would not be served as the main course. No, go ahead, Mr. Allen. Uh, is it possibly something you could eat uh, out of doors, perhaps more logically than indoors, or that you might ever eat out of doors, or might often eat out of doors? Well, I would say this, that um, you say it's something you would eat more outdoors. I would think that logically it might be more yes. readily eaten outdoors than indoors, yes. Um, could they possibly uh, serve these things with uh, mustard at Yankee Stadium? <laughs> no. <laughs> One dot and nine to go, Miss French. Could this be eaten, or is it eaten, ever by something other than the human race? Yes. Animals could eat this product, whatever it is? Yes. Is it uh, especially for animals, this product? Mm, no. Boo! <laughs> John knows different animals from you, Mr. Christopher. Would you ask that question again? Is it, is it especially for I animals? don't know how I asked it. What did I say? Well, you always said, is it especially for animals? I yes, think I we... said, is it especially a product for animals? Well, in yes. the broad categories as we use them, we give you a yes. I see. Is it um, uh, a, an animal product of any kind? Is there any meat in it? Yes. <laughs> is there any uh, grain in it? Grain? No. Oh, two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. <laughs> Mr. Christopher, is this product with meat in it uh, made specially for one, primarily for one kind of animal? No. <laughs> I mean, if it were dog food, I mean, no. it could be eaten by no. another animal. That would make it three down and seven to go. There, there was a little word you used that threw it all out of kilter. Miss what, Kilgallen. What was Bennett's exact question, John, please? Would you care to repeat it, Mr. Sir? I want to know what word was out of kilter. That's what I was afraid I might tell you, so we won't repeat it. You go ahead, uh, Mr. I said, Dark. was it primarily for one kind of animal? such as dog food. Well, would this, would this food ever be eaten by four-footed animals? Yes. <laughs> All, right. All right, well, this is the box. Go ahead, go ahead, Miss Kilgallen. Well, would it also be eaten by some other kind of animal? Yes. There's no grain. And you're speaking of no animals grain. as apart from the human animal? Yes. Would it be eaten by um, fish ever? Yes. Is it good for them? Mm. Mm. Yes. It's fish, maybe. Uh, is this <laughs> product that has meat in it primarily meat? <laughs> Not mixed with other things? Yes. Is it the meat of any particular type of animal? Yes. Is it a four-footed animal before it no. becomes meat? No. <laughs> Four down and six to go, Mr. Allen. Do people sell shark bait or anything like that? <laughs> uh, would you ever throw some of this into an enclosure where an animal is being kept? Like yes. At a zoo? Yes. You sell zoo food. Zoo zoo crackers. Zoo zoo. Fish eat this, you say? Yes. This is not fish itself, though, is it? No. No. I mean... Uh, yes, this is not yes, fish. Yes, this is not no. fish. Go ahead. <laughs> My goodness. Could you buy this at a pet shop? Would you buy this at a pet shop? A big pet shop. <laughs> <laughs> no, I must say our guest is an expert on where you get this, and he says no. That's five down and five to go, Miss Francis. A uh, whale is not a fish, is a whale? A <laughs> whale is a mammal. <laughs> This is Father's Day. Is this, is this a, a <laughs> product, something that does fly, a fly, uh, um, something that is found in water, even though it is not a fish? No. No. It is not found in water. <laughs> Six down and four to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Mr. Christopher, would this thing ever crawl around the ground like a worm? Yes, it would. Uh, is it the worm family? Yes, it is. Well, uh, do you have something to do with worms? Yes, I do. <laughs> Well, I suppose you, you raise worms. That's raise right. worms is right. <laughs> uh, and here we have some friends. <laughs> Would you fellas like these with mm. or without salt and pepper? <laughs> and we brought this along to show you this, as you see, it's one method of their packaging. And they're, they're 
uh, sold in stores this way. From Christmas. Yeah, adorable. Aren't they wonderful? <laughs> These I are the Lumbricus, uh, Lumbricus Taristas, by the way. What uh, do you mean they the... don't have those at Yankee Stadium? <laughs> well, it's a big concession. <laughs> a big worm concession at Yankee Stadium. Well, I, not them. Well, Mr. Uh, Christopher, you did fairly well with the prizes. We also had a great deal of fun and hope you did. It was nice of you to come down from Canada to visit us and what's my line. Good Thank night. Thank you very much. Nice to see you. Now we come to the special feature of the program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity. And since my friends would recognize our guest immediately, they have, as usual, been provided with blindfolds. Are they in place, panel? Yes, yes sir. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? In the case of our mystery celebrity, we get right down to the basic and general questioning. And let's begin that with Dorothy Kilgallen. Well, there were... There were two bursts of applause. May I assume that this is only one person? May you assume that this is only one person? Mm-hmm. Or would I be right in assuming I... No. That's one down and nine to go, Mr. Allen. Well, I asked that the wrong way, didn't hmm. I? There's more than one people. <laughs> hey, uh, <clears throat> might we ever have seen you, the whole gang of you over there, in motion pictures? Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, are you a man, one of you, anyway? You just have, uh, you just have one friend with you? <laughs> no. No, wait a minute, ask the question again, Steve. I'm just trying, I mean, uh, in other words, uh, there are only two beings over there. Yeah. Hmm. I have a, a, a crazy idea, and I'll, I'll get a fast no and clear this up anyway. Is the second being, by any chance, something other than human? Two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. No, oh. no hard feelings. <laughs> then you are both human. I can tell in the last one. Very good question. Uh huh. Uh, would you be considered comedians? That's a very good question too, Ralph. <laughs> uh, have you been seen on television? Yeah. <laughs> are is one of you pretty zany? <laughs> I mean, is one of you crazier than the other? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wouldn't by any chance be Martin Lewis. No. <laughs> Three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Uh, are you both of the masculine persuasion? <laughs> yes. Yes, Mr. Sir. Uh, are you by any chance brothers? No. That makes it four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. You say you've made movies. Yes, that has been elicited. Uh, would you say that your first and possibly foremost fame was in motion pictures rather than on the stage or some other medium? Would you say that your <laughs> fame is first and foremost uh, from the movies rather than from the stage? Is that right, Miss Kilgallen? That's right. No. That would make it five down and five to go, Mr. Allen. Let's just take another blind guess. Uh, are you Abbott and Costello by any chance? Six down and four to go, Miss <laughs> Francis. <laughs> Two in mind. I don't know which to pick. Um, uh, are you a Smith and Dale? Uh, <laughs> seven down and three to go, Mr. Sir. No? See if it's Finn and Hattie. It might be. <laughs> uh, have you ever had uh, musical shows on broad been in musical shows on Broadway? Yeah. Do you, do you shoot a lot of guns around a great deal of time? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Could you be Olsen and Johnson? No! Yes! 
Johnson and panel, I must say that you did very well on that one. What can do with another challenger? Would you sign in, please, sir? <laughs> Marshall, Marshall Levine, is that right, sir? Mr. Levine, would you um, tell us where you're from? Rochester, New York. Rochester, New York. Well, now, uh, would you take a small hike down in front of Manhattan there for a moment? All right, Mr. Levine, now back here, if you will, and sit down next to me. And since time is fleeing on the winds, I think uh, I will take a chance that you know the procedure. Know that we go now to the wild questions, which we always begin with Miss Kilgallen. Professional football star. Mr. Allen. Has a voice like a radio announcer. Miss Francis. Professional basketball. Mr. Sir. Oh, everybody in Rochester works for Eastman Kodak. <laughs> no, I'm afraid nobody has it right. We'll let our viewers have a further look at Mr. Levine, and at the same time, we'll tell them what his line is. But the panel has to date. All right. Mr. Levine, the rules, I think you know. No answer, $5, 10 no's, you win the game. We keep the record of all of that up there. And Mr. Levine is salaried. Let's begin the general questioning with uh, Arlene Francis. Do you work for a profit-making organization, Mr. Levine? Yes. Is there any product involved in what you do? Yes. Uh, is it a product that I might use? Yes. Uh, is it a product that can be found in the home? Yes. Is it a product that one could buy at a department store? Yes. Is it attractive? Yes. Is it uh, more decorative than it is useful? No. No, I wouldn't think so either. That's one <laughs> that I'm to go on sir. Miss Levine, can you wear this product? Yes. Is it, would it become under the heading of apparel? Yes. Is there any cloth in its makeup? Yes. <laughs> this isn't leading me where I thought it would. Uh, is, it, uh, is it worn by both sexes? Yes. <laughs> is it worn more by one sex than the other sex? That's a very interesting question. <laughs> I would say this, that if we get down to the basic facts, of uh, Mr. Levine's line, that there would be a serious imbalance if it were worn more by one sex than the other. So we'll flip a card. Two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that was a strange answer. I thought it might be, you know. <laughs> this is a strange program. <laughs> that serious imbalance, you mean it is more logical, I just want to clarify this, Mr. Daly, it is more logical for there to be a more or less even distribution of this product among the both sexes. Yes. Are these human beings that wear this article of apparel? Yes. Uh, are human beings of one age uh, or one age group more likely to use this product than other human beings of another age group? No. Uh, gee, I think, with your permission, we'll give a qualified yes, since it's phrased as more of one age group than another age group. OK? Qualified yes. Go on, Ms. Kilgallen. Got a minute to go. Uh, this is utilitarian. Well, yes. Rather than decorative. The uh, uh, question was, was more utilitarian than decorative, and we said it was more utilitarian, or as utilitarian as, than, as it was. Uh, when it is worn, is it in view? Yes. Uh, it is uh, not embarrassing if it is in view? No. Uh, is it worn above the waist? Ye yes. Does it also extend below the waist at any yes. time? Would it be called a garment? Yes. Uh, is it, does, does it have any protective nature? Mm, no. no, I don't think so, and time has run out, so by default, Mr. Levine, you win the full prize. Actually, we're sorry you never got to his services. They're more interesting than the product in connection, because Mr. Levine is a bridal consultant. He dresses the males and the females, the right numbers, oh. and the right colors, and so forth. Well, that does have to be even. I can understand that. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Levine, you win the full prize, and thanks for being our guest. Just a moment, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to give you a preview look at one of our guests whose line our panel is going to be asked to try and identify on next week's program. Next week at this same time, our panel of experts will be asked, What's my line by this young man?
Would you know what his occupation is? Could you guess his line? Well, for the answers to these questions and a good many others, some of which we think are going to be highly amusing, be sure and tune in again next Sunday evening at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Saving Time when once again Stop It invites you to play What's My Line? For other localities, check your local listings for the date and time of our weekly series. And don't forget that uh, you will find What's My Line, a completely new program on CBS radios on Wednesday night. Until we see you again or you hear from us, this is John Daly saying good night, Dorothy. Good night, Steve. Good night, Arlene. Uh, good night and enjoy yourself in Palisades Park, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> you keep your hair that way. Good night, John. And good night, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being with us on What's My Line. <laughs> This has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Cobbman production. In association with the CBS Television Network.